Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Spy Party Competitive League uh, cast for today. We're on to the Challenger Semifinals. Getting right down to it. And uh, to help me along, I got uh, two very excellent casters. We got uh, Dowsey. That is I. Drowey. Yep. For, uh, or for, for the yep, or Drowey the in, this, among us. in the Spy Party canon, yes. And then we have <laughs> Slappy Davis. Hello, hello. Sometimes known as Skippy David. That's going to come back in about a week, isn't it? <laughs> I might. I don't know. If we do another escape room, maybe. I have to uh, I have to know the story behind this. Oh, no. But, it was uh... simply, we did a, an escape room last PAX. And part of it was we all, like, we wrote down our names onto, you know, hello, my name is, uh, cards, you know, those little tag stickers. And, uh, yeah. I don't know, the, the guy who read off all the names saw Flappy and thought it said Skippy. <laughs> there you go. And it, it sticks. That's, yeah. That's how these things work. Well, I mean, occasionally yeah. sticks. There's all right, anyway. Things that stick like that, yeah. I mean, that's how, uh, that's how Jory came about. Oh, yeah. Just completely miswrote my name on the prediction stream. Yep, that happens. And then, There's a lot and then, of like, uh, water-related things like that, like Weast and stuff that I'm hearing yeah. about. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I mean, I, well, I mean, I think my misspelling of your name was just a result of uh, autocorrect, not not recognizing Dowsy as a real thing, and I was like, no, oh, yeah, you yeah. mean you mean Drowsy. Like, yeah, a lot of people get like Downey because of Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, I might have, uh, yeah. But uh, it's it's funny because after Woda did the misspelling of uh, of Drowy, he then uh, announced my interview at the earlier of the at the beginning of the season, and he rose uh, wrote Raising Start instead of Rising Star. So it's like it's it's Drowy the Raising Start is <laughs> that is, is, uh, your... is my title. Okay, that is good. Awesome. Now let's let's actually look at some uh, of the uh, match stuff going on here. We've got uh, semifinals today, and then tomorrow the actual finals. Uh, we got Turnip Boy versus uh, Plastiques or Plastics, and uh, Lazy Plastic. Bear versus uh, Shep. Yep. I think we're Shep's starting the, up. Uh, the hard one to pronounce because yeah, it doesn't doesn't look like that, but it is Shep. Yeah, kind of helps. I, I guess it's is it short for Shepherd. I don't know, possibly. Yeah, I don't know. Potentially helps though because like. Uh, audibly sounds different to Chef, uh, to Steph. Yeah, yeah, I like, uh, yeah, but yeah, it makes it would make sense if it was covered. I don't know, just guessing there. All right, anyway, so we're gonna start off with uh, Turnip Boy and uh, Plastics. Let's see here, Where did my... so this is a pretty interesting matchup because, uh, in Challenger, for those who don't know, we, we ran a Swiss league, um, and one of the rules of Swiss is that you cannot play the same opponent twice. Um, you always get a, a, a unique opponent every week. Um, but in week eight of the uh, the Swiss League, Turnip Boy and Plastics did match up against each other. Um, and so uh, we got, you know, the picks and bans there. I'll be interested to see if they change much. Uh, the result was a 7-3 a in favor of Turnip Boy, um, which potentially could uh, foreshadow tonight's, uh, tonight's match. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, Turnip Boy is... Uh, the top seed, still still in it, so it's you know it's gonna be a, a kind of you know tough for Plastiques, but I mean, heck, they both made it this far in the tournament. You know, Plastiques what? could be easily have improved. Yeah, one of the great things about the Challenger League, just in general, is that um, there's still so many players are still so early into their development. That there's going to be such vast changes in both their experience and their play styles as they play through. So both of these players, um, when they had met earlier, they're going to be probably entirely different players now, and it's going to be a little bit hard to expect because, like for example, up up in the old crusty divisions, I know a lot about what to expect from certain players. Sometimes I'm wrong; they still do develop up there, but I I tend to know what they've done and how they play, even if I haven't played them for a while. These players. There's so much that they could have learned and done and improved since the last time they met. Not to mention, since the last time they met, Turnip Boy also entered into the Summer Cup. So he's uh, had the opportunity to play even more matches uh, against other opponents. Um, 
So that just uh, increases, I guess, the, the learning potential for yeah. Turnip Boy. All right. Anyway, we can look at picks and bands now. Um, the first band came from, uh, looks like Plastics, and that was Balcony. Yep. Balcony is the, uh, I guess, catch-all band for uh, Plastics. Um, interestingly enough, he, he banded about six, 57% over the season, but when they played each other in week eight, he left it open and Turnip Boy insta-locked it. Um, meaning that uh, he wasn't going to allow that to happen. But the band previously was Modern, Modern yeah. so I, I assume Turnip Boy will uh, pick that up in this uh, this draft. Yeah, well, I mean, most maps get picked. I mean, most maps that aren't banned get picked in this format. So, so oh, there's yeah. a regular Can chance. we talk about the format real quick? Yeah, um, it's just. To... Yeah, so it's basically the same as regular season, one ban each, and then instead of. Picking two maps each, it's three maps. The first map being doubled, and the uh, the rather the rest being singles. No. So and, and it's that. first to first to nine. Although, do we have? Is there a tiebreaker in this? There is a format? yeah tiebreaker. Okay, yes. If you tie eight eight, uh, we play a pick and cut format yes, yes, where okay. the higher seed uh, chooses who will do the picking and who will do the cutting. Um, one person picks the map that they want to play on, and um, I guess it's not picking and cutting, and then the other player then picks whether they want to uh, to sn spy or, or snipe on it. Um, yep. So it's a, a one match um, format, one game format for a tiebreaker. All right, and the, let's see the the uh, next band that came from uh, the first band came from Turnip Boy anyway, and the only band is uh, Ballroom. Looks like the same same map he banned uh, on the previous. Game is that is sort of standard ban? Yeah, standard ban, 42.8% uh, over the entire season. Uh, a map that he doesn't feel too comfortable on. Um, so uh, definitely getting rid of it. Also one of Plastic's highest picked maps as well. So you get that, that counter, counter ban as well as, you know, the ban that just suits you anyway. I think that the, my, the theme so far has been uncertainty. Ballroom has a lot of uncertainty of being able to guard basically anything. Uh, it's one of the harder maps to guard. Swap swap is still swap, so it's not impossible. Um, it's a little bit hard to be sure about per line. Amba is always going to be in a little bit of a dangerous spot because of the flow of the party. Uh, microfilm, actually, the microfilm's not too bad. Yeah. Um, for the maps, but most of the things are a little bit hard to be certain about. And because it's a large-ish map on any 4 of 8, snipers are a little bit uncomfortable on that map and right now you don't want your nerves to be put up against um some uncomfortable play yep all right and the uh so now let's get into picks uh first pick I actually kind of surprised to see it picked quite this early but uh well if you if you you know if you like it show it uh courtyard yeah so uh, it's actually interesting um i uh found out what these guys were that they were playing and I actually predicted the entire draft from from bands to, to picks. These guys are pretty predictable when it comes to their the maps they like and Courtyard has been uh, Plastic's home map for the entire of the season. Um, only issue is that like you mentioned it's early, um, Turnip Boy also likes Courtyard, it's his yeah. most as well. So you know from a com an analyt analytical point of view, I would be leaving that map open because you know it's going to come one, one day or another. Um, yeah. But you do get it first. Yeah, yeah that's I kind first... of the cool thing though, yeah. is I like that about the doubling of the first pick because you're absolutely right. If um, if I have a specific favorite map and I know my opponent likes that map too, I leave it open because I'm mm -hmm. anticipating them picking it. But they might not pick it during their doubled map, and if I really want it to be doubled, it gives a little bit of an extra incentive. Yeah. Now in the second round of picks, you definitely, if you know the other person likes it, you can definitely leave it open and then see if they pick it and then pick it if they don't pick it. That's kind of the things I actually like about the doubling of the first pick is it changes the incentives a little bit so it's not just, you know, trading off. The other thing, though, about Courtyard, it's a great map to start off on if you have nerves. Again, this yeah. is a really easy map. Sorry, I shouldn't say really easy. It's a much more standard map. You're much more comfortable. If mm -hmm. you... It, both sides, honestly, is kind of comfortable because you kind of know what you need to do as Spy. You need to get a hard Yeah. Map. I would say the, the win conditions of, of Courtyard are, are fairly... Um, simple, which makes it that that comfortable map. Uh, and to justify Plastics picking this first, like you mentioned, because both players know this is their most picked map, uh, Plastics has more incentive to pick it first because he's currently sitting on a 78% win rate overall 
on the map compared to the uh, the 68 percent win rate uh, mm -hmm. of turnip boys so for plastics he really wants this to be a double pick because it increases his chance of winning the series yeah, makes sense all right anyway the uh next pick map uh Actually, a very commonly picked map uh, this season, also a very commonly banned map, is Library. Yeah, that's an interesting one, because that's uh, that's when Turnip Boy is starting to, to mix things up, because he's been banning Library. He, he hasn't really picked it yep. that often. Um, Looks like he picked I think it last because... time against uh, uh, Plastics. Yeah, he picked it last time. And uh, when you actually look at Plastics' sniper win rate on Library, it's deteriorated quite a bit. It used to be pretty high, but recently it's sitting at like under 50% on huh. Sniper. So you're, you're at this point now where if Turner Boy is, you know, doing some sort of statistical research, then it makes a really good double play. Yeah. Maybe it's not really him getting worse. It's the other players getting better at Library, possibly. Potentially, yeah. You know. It's, it can be, you know, it can be an overwhelming map for some snipers. Just knowing where to look. When to look. All right. Next. Anyway, the next pick from uh, Plastics, a very different map from uh, Library, uh, is High Rise. I think uh, any any three of five High Rise, correct? Yep. The, uh, that's the that's the only that's the that's the uh, only High Rise in uh, SCL. Yeah. This, uh, this I season. Think Plastics has felt comfortable on on High Rise, yeah. and so it just it makes sense to go for it, especially. Like I always think that if you feel like you're slightly worse than your opponent, then picking up maps like any three of five high rise makes sense because it gives you that extra element of AI completions, which forces the sniper's hand. Yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, next pick from Turnip Boy is uh, Modern. Yeah, we did in fact see it. Yeah, like you mentioned, uh, banned in uh, week eight, so. Turnip Boy whips it out just because he feels it, it might be Plastic's weak point. Yeah, it could, you know, well, I mean, it looks like five of eight, five of eight maps is the thing uh, he's picking here. I mean, just to to to, to give some uh, idea of it, uh, Turnip Boy overall, 75% win rate on this map, whereas uh, Plastic's is a, a 69, but when you look at his sniper statistics, it's 100, so... It's the spy that's lacking on modern. This is kind of the map you might expect that you you trade wins on. Yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, the final map pick out of uh, plastics is uh, pub. You know. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what to say yeah. about pub. It's you know. Well, I guess pub. if you don't if you don't want to pick veranda, you pick pub. That's true. It is. It is true. At this point, it's not so much about what they want to pick, but about what they don't want to pick. And Veranda has been incredibly unpopular. Yeah. And given that, um, given that his opponent, uh, has been picking, um, well, also you could pick Terrace, but let's be honest. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, <laughs> you don't want to pick uh, a five of eight large map for your opponent at this point, especially given that. I mean, if I had to guess, I'm guessing that would be the next pickup for, um, Turnip Boy, but could be wrong. Um, but uh, if you, you don't want to pick your opponent's pick for them at this point, yeah. that's what you're really trying to avoid. Yeah, that's yeah. Oh, you don't want to give them like a yeah. You know, it's almost like yeah. You're like hey, hey, thank you. Now I don't have to pick it. Now I can pick something else I like. I'd I would assume that uh, Tenet Boy picks up Gallery as his last pick here. Uh, you might be right about that. In fact, you are right. It is Gallery. I mean, it's yes. it's Gallery is like a five of eight map. That's not a five of eight map. True. Mm -hmm. I mean, it has. It's, a, it's, it's 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 also a four of eight map. That's not a four of eight. Map. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. It, it's the size of it makes it very yeah. um middle ground. Yeah, believe it or not, when it was first introduced, we were doing five of eight for a bit. Nobody was quite sure what was the fair meta, mm -hmm. and it seemed like five of eight made sense at some point, just because you know. Yeah, but it was four that was of seven. Wrong. And then yeah. the four of seven, there was a lot of interesting talk about what the what the correct mission to cut was. Yeah, and... that was interesting because yeah, that was this was one of the first maps where cutting uh, contact seems like a, a viable option. Viable. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, because it was just like these two conversations. You're like, like contact is just like not not as guaranteed. It gives so many low lights away. You know? Yep. So yeah, but it's a very interesting map, and we'll uh, hopefully get to there. Uh... I mean, it would have to be some pretty serious domination to, to not get there, so we'll see. That's certainly true. 
Looking All forward right. to this. Uh, like you mentioned, um, this is Turnip Boy finished third regular season, seventh uh, for Plastics, making them third and at uh, first and yep. fifth seed respectively in the uh, the single limb. Um, winner of this match goes to finals, and in finals you've got the guarantee of uh, you know finding yourself in a promotion scenario. Yeah, winner both finals, the finals are getting, wins. Yeah. And uh, yeah. The the winner of the grand finals gets promoted automatically. The runner up uh, plays, I believe, it will be Mister Rogers in a oh. promotion match. But uh, well, pro- there's a good chance that everybody will get promoted here, just because uh, I imagine a pretty big uh, format change for next season. Or not necessarily format change, but divisional adjustments. It's true, but also you're going to be jockeying for position in those administrative. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Games. Yeah, that'll. The it will, these, like, yeah, these games still definitely matter, but. Well, yeah, no, it's not even that, but like, um, let's say because of the nature of how administration promotions work, uh, the difference of one position could mean an entire division upwards, right? Like, if yeah. you end up one position above your opponent, if there's administration promotions, uh, eventually there's a line at which there's you know a cutoff, and all you above this line get to go up two divisions all you above this line go up one division yeah so it's gonna be particularly interesting to see how that goes yeah because there's certainly going to be a lot of that next next season as you know i I guess it's pretty normal to lose a a chunk of people just because this this stuff is pretty this game is pretty hard pretty intense some people just you know at some point you reach a reach a point where it's just rough yep and the whole you know and just the of course the nature of uh time zones and everything it, it can be hard for people to get matches set up it's just you know not ideal for everybody all right anyway we'll actually get into the match here we got turn up boy as the uh first spy i guess could have mentioned that um turn up boy was uh um the uh higher seed so he he requested to pick second pick map second and spy first which was you know that's that's sen- that's sensible i've I've chosen to spy first a number of times, but then I think later on I found I liked sniping first better. But but anyway, we'll see how this goes. Uh, you both ready? Yes. Yep. All right, awesome. I'll count it down. Uh, three, two, one, playing it. I think the decision to spy first kind of shows that Turnip Boy is confident that he will find himself an early spy win to, to get the leg up over Plastics. Yeah, and as far as easing into the game, I actually do prefer um, spying first, where you get to... Right when you start sniping, you have to be on it immediately. You have to start turning around, you have to find where where's Ambo, where's Toby, what are time ads at, did someone do an early swap? Where with spy, you get to let AI control, and then maybe you just kind of let that guide what your first move is going to be. You're probably just going to go for it for first, like we're seeing, but it's a little bit simpler. I'll be really interested to see exactly what Turnip Boy wants to do on Courtyard here. Typically, he does the uh, the normal three missions of the, the contact inspect seduce. Uh, but when it comes to that pesky fourth mission on Courtyard, it tends to be a fingerprint that he will lean into, um, not really wanting to, to go for the hard tails. We'll have to see if uh, he changes things up, though, because Plastic's Courtyard sniper rate is pretty bonkers. 16 sp- sniper gains this season and a whopping 94% success rate of sniper. Also, 100% shot rate as well, so Plastics likes to shoot. And I don't know what the research rate of um, Challenger players is, so I don't know if Turnip Boy has been looking into Plastics games and noticing the ways in which he's been successful at Sniper. For example, some people are very successful on Courtyard if they highly guard fingerprint because so many spies are unwilling to do the hard tell on, uh, on Courtyard. So I'm not sure if it's so much that he's particularly excellent in the red. courtyard, but he might just be good at playing the meta that spies Ooh. kind of settle into. White contact into white purloin into gulp at statues next to the ambassador. Turnip boy is definitely switching things up here. Oh no, we oh. pick up the briefcase next to the ambassador. It's an action test. It's a priority difference. Turnip boy steps away. Kind of a, a nice little AI yeah. move there, but plastics yeah. is like, that doesn't look right. I'll shoot for it. And that will be unfortunately uh, turn it boy losing that spy game. Yeah, that definitely was not quite accurate. I mean, it might have been better to just put it down in that spot. Just, I mean, uh, I mean, it was wrong either way, but 
The uh, briefcase is actually correct after he's picked it up. And NAI tends to not be able to put the briefcase down there. Only the ambassador can due to the, the pot plant. Um, however, like you mentioned, picking up the briefcase in that scenario is uh, is a hard tell. Yeah. Um, and uh, it yeah. all comes down to the fact that briefcase is the, the number one. I mean, there could be some like action. scenario where the ambassador had put it down, left, and then came back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could... obviously, if the ambassador was walking to there, but she'd she'd just put it down. Yep. So, yep. you know, it's unfortunate, but uh, yep, action priorities do uh, do crop up. They they get all they they get all of us at one point or another. And I think statue ha- pickup has to become a, a number one action priority, in my opinion. Yep, I would I would agree with that. It's true. Like we've actually we have a thread out there about what the absolute action priority should be. And um, we've complained about Checker a few, few times. But what I will give action priorities being a little bit odd is that it makes sure that everybody is paying attention to the little things, making sure that you're paying attention to all the little actions you have to do to play correctly. It's sort of like the justification for action tests at all is action tests in and of themselves aren't very difficult or they're, they're not very complicated, right? They're that little bit of extra thoughtfulness that you can't just put your mind on autopilot. And unfortunately, it sometimes is kind of rough because you're just trying to pick up the damn statue and there's, this, uh, there's a briefcase there and you're not paying attention to the text that pops up. But it's just another testament to how spy, you have to be on it all the time. You have to constantly be thinking about the little things. Yeah, I mean, and I mean, you know, because kind of the thing is like, um, like when a statue is next to a, I mean, a briefcase next to a statue, I mean, AI will more often pick up the briefcase and the statue, assuming the ambassador's yep. not there. So right. a lot of times that's the thing you'd probably want to do more often, but just, you know, definitely not in that case. Yeah, no, not in that case. One one other thing before we, we move on, um, just to, to talk about it a little bit more is that. Uh, briefcase is number one priority uh, when you you step over it. Um, the second priority, I believe, is sip drink. Third priority is st- uh, is um, is you know gold drink, and then it's pick up statue. Uh, so for f- unfortunately for Turnip Boy, not only does he have a scenario where to gulp his drink at statues, he has to scroll multiple times, which is fine because that's you know the the compromise you make for uh, committing a hard tail and gulp is that you then have to take time and break etiquette. Um, but even worse is that he has to then, you know, uh, navigate the uh, the briefcase pickup as well. So uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work out. But we do move on. Yep. All right. Anyway, uh, that's uh, one win for plastics. So that's you know, probably feeling pretty good about that. I mean, even though it's kind of a, you know, kind of a sneaky win. Uh, you know, you'll take them. And anyway, uh, plastics gets his chance to pull ahead as spy here in three, two, one, playing it. The silver lining there, though, is if you if you're gonna throw away a, a spy game, it might as well be courtyard. You know, like it's it always sucks to throw it away, but in the end, it's on a map that's pretty difficult to win a spy. If you threw away a game on say high rise any three of five, that would hurt a lot more. Yeah, no, I have to agree there, and particularly because these guys are both very strong as sniper. Uh, when it comes to courtyard, this is kind of the map where you expect that you're going to trade wins regardless. Plastics here, though, does add time to, to start us off and now is idling in a conversation with the double agent. Uh, going from uh, from completions to uh, a guy on Courtyard who just doesn't complete, um, a 62.5% win rate on Courtyard with a tiny 18.75% uh, completion rate. Plastics forces miss shots more often than not when it comes to Courtyard, usually through the his immense ability to hit green te- action tests, potentially the highest in Challenger. Uh, it feels like every action test is green. And, and so we'll have to watch out for that because purloins, swaps, all of the above can be pretty powerful for plastics. And knowing his action test rate is interesting because he red flirted at um, at Orange Dress, and so that makes me wonder if that's intentional. It was her at Windows, so that'd be a little bit of an on-spot to red flirt. Uh, it's not really forcing her to do something she wouldn't have done red. Uh, pretty soon. But I'm curious if he's going to go for a frame on Orange Sari. That's the contact now complete. We've got a first fingerprint here as well for Plastics, giving ourselves a lot of insurance. And of course, that extra time ad we did at the beginning of the game, the 45 seconds, means that we do have time to uh, to be playing slightly slow. Here comes our first flirt. It is a white test, 34%. We're standing close to the Ambassador, maybe 
we can find ourselves in a position to bug if she comes the right way. Doesn't oh she does, but we uh, we decide to go against it and looking at the sniper cam probably a wise decision. Yeah, the arm would have poked out directly towards um, Plastics. Now Plastics was almost close enough that you could have done a standing bug through the conversation, but it was just a little bit too far, which is actually not a bad play on courtyard on the, on the small conversation circles in the corner of courtyard. Pick up the briefcase, but there was no fingerprint on it, I believe, or we didn't fingerprint one of the two. Either way, that's uh, it's the second time the sniper has seen us interacting with the briefcase. And if you're not tracking the fingerprints perfectly, you might just uh, attribute fingerprint done to plastics. Yeah, I'm, so I'm guessing that plastics is going to be really interested in hitting that um, fingerprintable statue up at some point if they're able to get their seduction, um, seduction done. Now, I don't know how much heat plastics has for, it looks like we are stepping into that right and we're just going to die for it. Yeah, look at that. At this point, Turnip Boy takes the shot, essentially assuming contact, fingerprint, and the seduce has been done. It's a really bold shot from Turnip Boy, but it is going to be a correct one after all. I, I wonder if the second... Yeah, it, it was fingerprintable. Second, the briefcase does say picked up fingerprintable briefcase, so... Ah, okay. so we forgot to fingerprint. That's unfortunate. Just forgot. Yeah, I, oh, I guess that uh, yeah, comes down is. to the fact that we reject... Oh, I know what it is. He rejects Toby, so he, he uses the uh, the right click or whatever it is to reject Toby, assumes that's a fingerprint done, and that's uh, that's unfortunate. Whoops. Bad. Oh, so, well, then that's fair, you know? Action priorities. Yeah. They, they <laughs> double-edged sword. Well, that, that, that one's actually just a, that's a mechanical mistake, because I, it's I believe... It's just the wrong button. I've done, I've done that yeah. myself many that's times. Cool. Just, there's, there's certainly plenty of times where I've, like, just hit the normal button. Did you have to reject Toby... Button? or cycle to fingerprint one of the two yeah. so I, i'm assuming his idea was reject toby fingerprint and then put it down but yep didn't work out as long as we agreed that these both these games are checkers fault and then it's just you gotta get those <laughs> checker games yep. out of the way and then you move on <laughs> that's it yep all right anyway uh so we're right off to a sniper party pretty expected for courtyard uh especially with these two uh Pretty uh, sniper heavy players here, and we'll see if uh, that'll continue in three, two, one, playing it. Till walking through the middle of a conversation to start things off. I don't think that's going to be uh, too much of a worry for plastics, not really the kind to, to note these things down. Plastics kind of plays a, a hybrid, um, I want to say camping into behavioralist style. Um, I, I think camping is, is probably. The number one priority for him but he definitely he, he he scrimmed a lot against Viri when he was learning the game um and so there's some form of like behaviorist knowledge there the that room. comes into his play i've seen a lot of players that have um kind of taken a new flavor of behavioralism where they'll start behavioralist and they'll finish as campers where they they use the behavioralism to narrow down the party based upon the general um you know where people are ending up how they're acting and then just assign low lights because people tend to flirt early. And then using that knowledge, using that narrowed down party, we'll just try to finish the spy off with camping. I have to see if that's uh, what's going on here. I don't believe Plastics is the one to low light much. It's more of uh, suspicious behaviorism, I believe. But at this point, Turnip Boy is doing well. We're at the minute 45 second mark, and we've got our contact and our seduce done in two. So now we're thinking, how do we finish here? Statues, obviously going to be a good bet. But do we find fingerprints as well? One thing I'm already noticing is I think that these players don't pick casts. They've picked ambassadors that I would say are um, strictly dominated in some form or another. Like you could either, you could have, sometimes you want a slow ambassador, sometimes you want a fast ambassador. But in each of those classes, there's a larger frame, there's a blah, 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 blah. The one thing I will give to uh, Papa Danger being ambassadors ever since the King nerf, it's not as much of a, of a problem to put Papa Danger as ambassador because you know that you're taking him out of the, um, the suspect pool. But it does mean that I think that, uh, oh, and the seduction targets have been slow. Um, both games and that's a little bit inefficient then again if they're looking at if they're looking at flirt enough they might not think that your flirt suspect is going to be the slow characters because of the yomi involved but i do wonder I if there's uh much yomi going on especially in challenger i think 
the levels of inexperience and the fact that you don't really play each other multiple times kind of lends to it just being a very raw game. We've got 30 seconds left here, Slap. We attempt to reverse drive by behind the back bug onto Kane, but it doesn't quite connect. Now we have to think about how we're going to finish. Halfing towards the ambassador, it's going to be another attempt at a walking bug. Has it gone unseen? Till's walking bug is not good. Doesn't look like Plastics is on top of this. Two seconds left. This is a spy win for Turnip Boy. Yes, that was very visible. Yeah, so it was. I wonder what... Uh... So maybe it was like List or something? I'm trying to figure yeah. out where we were looking at that time. I don't um, know. It doesn't look like what? he's looking... I mean, he's looking at... Briefcase, maybe. Um... Yeah, so let's see. So usually when... Um... Uh, when snipers are in rotation, they tend to look in the direction that they're rotating, unless yeah. they're rotating to get a better angle on a specific person. But it may have been the briefcase. But that's interesting because it was a low light that was picking up briefcase. Um, maybe we were just checking for swap. I, I'm yeah, not maybe. quite sure what we're looking. But at nobody had. One. I mean, yeah, there. I guess uh, the twin had been to that statue, but that was. Well, that was kind of a takes while advantage ago. of the movement. Though. Yeah, I don't know what it yeah. was, but anyway, that was. Uh... So uh, Plastic says that he was actually looking for bug, but as oh. we all know, movement on Courtyard can be one of the main reasons people miss bugs. Is uh, It's it's harder yeah. to see the animation when you're in motion. Yep. All right, anyway, um, Turnip Boy takes uh, the first spy win of the set. And on Courtyard 2, that's a pretty uh, pretty big advantage, essentially. We'll see if you can uh, capitalize on that and take the win overall for this uh, this map or venue. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll get that one of these days. All right. Anyway, here we go. Uh, we got uh, red dress here in three, two, one, playing it. As uh, as someone who watches a, a ridiculous amount of other competitive esports, map is ingrained into my mind. Unfortunately, yeah, Plastics think... struggles to get onto that pad there, but I don't think it's uh, it's been spotted. I don't think we're going to be getting rid of map anytime. It's it's going to be, but the, the, by the communities that are going to come into Spy Party, it's going to be. You're right. It's too ingrained. I do yeah. wonder if um, if Turnip Boy is going to feel like he's on a little bit of borrowed time, as it were, because and we were not run. confident in that bug. We were just trying to do something to finish. We probably thought it was like a 25, 30% play at that point, but that was our best remaining play. But we were able to get away with it. So I'm hoping, I'm wondering if Turnip Boy is going to feel like um, a little bit relieved, I guess, more than confident at this point. Yeah, I'll have to have to see how this one does play out. Of course, this, uh, this courtyard pick here isn't the map choice that we uh, are looking to win it on library coming up for uh, for turnip boy and that's uh, a map that he's done well on and unfortunately plastics has faltered you do see that plastics has started the game off with a contact and a 25 percent flirt now we're stepping over to statues to pick up our inspects we'll have to see where plastics wants to find that hardtail as well whether it's early or late it doesn't look like the statue swap will come through so we do put it back one critique I do have of players in general, this isn't this isn't just um, challenger players by any means, is that, uh, and we saw this last game too, it's that spies just like doing missions. And so we're gonna feel really productive when we do contact and we do inspect and we do seduce. And then all we have left is the hard tell. But then if we think forward to that point, sometimes it's better to try to plan to do that hard tell first. Because now we are what you're doing is you're trading the ability to only do one more thing for a highlight, which is going to make the hard tell part harder. And so now it's not necessarily a bad decision because what it means is you're going to have a lot of options at the end and we are going to check our watch. We did right under the nose forehead though. Yeah, uh, that was literally under the nose of the sniper. Turnip Boy doesn't move. He doesn't react in, in, in movement. Potentially that's because he saw it and now is just going to watch closer. But here we go, Plastic's finishing up the flirt, and now we have a minute and 20 seconds to figure this one out. Toby, potentially a good choice if we get a reject chain going. The Ambassador's pretty close here. Maybe we can find the bug on the way out of the conversation, or even a behind-the-back one if he paths next to us. Toby's going to provide some cover as well. Here it is. Green Purloin is the decision. It, no reject chain, though, and offering to Orange Dress here, but she rejects as well. We've got a chain forming. All right, well, and it's going to be a highlight that takes it. Uh, it looks like we're 
Okay, and highlight. Well, okay, we have quite a we have quite a chain going now. A watch check next to the ambassador. It's a brave move. Sometimes you uh, you see it out of the corner of your eye and you think bug. All right, there it is. Gestos has been purloined, taken by the double agent. Two highlights in the reject chain, and now we're being offered to Plastics. This is a spy win. Yeah. Plastics is going to equalize the series. So the funny thing there is that's when DA sometimes. Sometimes it's horrible for DA to take the purloin because it confirms that it's a green, but sometimes it's great because sometimes snipers just don't pay attention to it, right? Drink is being offered to a DA, why look at it? But that is that burns us, and we don't even take a shot at that point. Maybe we didn't think that um, whoever had, had done it had finished missions, but at 30 -ish seconds, seconds left on Courtyard, I, I was a little bit surprised that either Papa Danger or... Um, uh, uh, red dress didn't get shot. So my assumption there, and you know, speculation was that either Turnip Boy didn't see that yeah, it was it's possible. Gone, doesn't seem the, like he's uh, just doing much. Doesn't look like there's much reaction to the purloin. Like there's no like directing the laser at the at the tray or anything in particular. So possible right. that it was just missed. Yeah, and that's again, that's like the DA thing. It's offered to DA, you're not paying attention, and by the time you check again, it's just not there, and game's over. Yeah, yeah, very good. Uh, good job, uh, Plastics. Uh, we're pulling out a spy one there and keeping it even. Those are good ways to sort of, I don't know, kind of pump up your, uh, your confidence going into you know the future sets. Yeah, unfortunately, we are going into <laughs> yep. the map pick that we've played a lot, but unfortunately not done too well on. This is uh, this is a rough one for for live uh, for plastics. This is kind of the map you get burnt on more often than not. Oh, so apparently in chat we're seeing that Turnip Boy had um, was watching when Da took the list, but looked away before it had faded. So <laughs> a little ah. bit of because some so sometimes there's the difference of the timing of the fade. So we guarded it for the initial one if it was one of the quick fades. But we looked away before it had actually disappeared, and that is that's brutal. But sometimes that happens in the randomness of the fades. Yep. 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 All right. Anyway, uh, I mean, so either way, they're they're tied up going into this uh, map. Uh, we'll see uh, if Turnip Boy can pull away on uh, five, six weaker maps here in three, two, one, and it. Yeah, and you know this is quite a, a large difference on. Uh, library, Tenet Boy's running with about a hundred percent sniper rate. Uh, about it just is a hundred percent sniper rate. Um, and uh, his spy uh, is all right. It's uh, it's sitting at forty three percent. I think that's fine. Um, but when you compare it to to plastic seasonal stats, uh, forty two percent sniper rate versus the thirty three percent spy rate. This is a, a map that plastics has to has to be coming into with. Uh, some form of nervousness and turn it boy confidence we're able to get the standing bug as ambassador joins us in conversation which is a nice pickup now bug is one of the easier maps to get by on library so it's not quite as huge as it would be on say courtyard to get that early bug out of the way but it is a nice pickup and we're going to be at 85 percent on seduce so we have got really good pacing already yeah really nice stuff and the seduce only one more to go at any range at this point turnip boy can either lean into the fact that he's speeding through the missions or we can just take our time here also have to decide what we're going to do as far as tells are concerned do we now that we have the bug early look for the fingerprints on the map or will we commit another hard tell either way that's two missions done in a minute 20 and we can continue debating this uh, for a little bit longer yeah, I would like to not see a double agent yet if we could help it and try to finish. I think finishing with double agent on library is quite strong. Uh, it's, it's snappers really don't like shooting for double agent in general, but especially not on library. Um, I think we are hoping for a fingerprint on this book because we had seen um, the briefcase was at this bookshelf, so we know Ambassador had been there. But by the time we had gotten there, it looks like it had been taken away, and we elect not to take out the the microfilm. Um, I'm I'm wondering if Turnip Boy thinks they might have a highlight for being near Ambassador. Um, they are they are not indeed highlight. Um, I think if they had known they were not highlight, they might have taken that book out and tried for a hard transfer. But instead, we put it back in. Unfortunately, my game just crashed, so uh, I gentlemen wouldn't mind pausing. Um, oh, sure. Um, just continuing the uh, the checker, please, trend of this cast. Gotcha. <laughs> 
Well, okay. So while we're while we're loading back in, so I'm paused at one forty two. Um, while at, we're loading back in. Yep, I'm at one forty three. Okay, so I'll start a second after you when yep, you re right. rejoin. Um, uh, and I'm gonna look at the game a little bit. So we had we I, I think we were hoping for fingerprint. So I was actually I was incorrect about there had been two guests. It's actually that ambassador had never put the book back yet. So we saw the briefcase at Blue Bookshelf earlier, but I think we had not seen um, Ambassador. Yeah. And so we were hoping that the briefcase had indicated that the Ambassador put it back, but indeed the Ambassador had taken out the book and had not put it back yet. So we might actually try for that fingerprint after this now. Yeah, and then that, is, seen... that is likely. Looks, looks like, I mean, like, I feel like that's like the only reason that like we're in this conversation right here. I don't know what else, you know, we'd, you'd really be doing. Right. And actually being seen at the same bookshelf twice is, you know, kind of not suspicious, right? Yeah. So we we might be able to maybe in a in a weird way visiting that blue bookcase earlier set us up for um for uh for a fingerprint later unintentionally perhaps, but I'm guessing that'll be the next move, but it's hard to tell. All right, yeah. gentlemen, uh, I have paused my game on one forty three. All right, so awesome. If you want to count this back in? Yeah, all right, awesome. Uh, let's go in three, two, one, playing it. So Turnip Boy, like you mentioned, might go for that fingerprint now. It's uh, two visits to the blue bookshelf. It kind of helps with lowering suspicion on yourself, especially if the sniper sees it. We take a very wide path above, uh, behind the ambassador to try and look like we're not bugging. I think Plastics probably would see that as well, but here it is. Straight over to the blue bookshelf. We do get that fingerprint now. And uh, Plastic's kind of watching us, wondering what's going on. Yeah, it looks like Plastic's took a second to mark that book. Um, so it doesn't look like we get a highlight for for the book. And But I, I, I'm sure that Turnip Boy thinks he's highlighted because of how long the laser was on us. It almost looked like if I was honestly spy, I would have thought it was debating shooting. Um, so I think that Turnip Boy might be nervous. Maybe I'm wrong, though, because we just add time at the windows right after. Yeah, time add does come through. And, you know, when you looked at it from the sniper point of view, he was just resting his laser on the middle of the screen where Toby and the ambassador were very clearly in sight. So there was a lot to look at, and pr probably it wasn't Irish. We do step over to the statues. We're going to pick up our inspects here. Unfortunately, this is a three cycle started up, and we do cut the animation. But, hey, it's library. He's not looking, so it's all good. Yes, library with a ton going on, on the other side of the map. All the action is on the other side of the map, and so we actually kind of get fortunate there. It also seems like Plastics isn't a um, statue highlighter, so it's either something that Plastics internalizes, and so it might be hard for us to tell how suspicious Turnip Boy is if um, if he's one of the players that just thinks about statues instead of shows it. But I'm curious what we're doing. So I'm assuming that we're going to really want to um, fingerprint and contact uh, is this a fingerprintable yeah. statue? It sure is. It is, yep. Yeah, this is really nice pacing. We step over, pick up the statue, get the fingerprint. Double agent is standing in conversation with the ambassador, so there is reason to watch us. Look at that. Plastics is going to take the shot, finds the two fingerprints, knows the inspects are done, and thinks that's about right. Yeah, it must have been uh, just, you know, looking at other stuff. Maybe just... Hmm... Yeah, I'm. Uh, so well, I just I wonder because he's he he looks at like the statue itself to see if it's swapped. But well, I don't, I don't know why you do that moment. if you're just gonna shoot for the, the other thing is, anyway. Maybe it was just the wheel. After we've maybe the wheels were turning. We've had the, we've had the time add as well, so so yeah. let's not forget that. Uh, Turner Boy adds time, and Plastics is literally staring down Irish as it happens, and kind of does a double glance just to check to see who's at who's at the different pads, yep. and so. You, you you already know if you've seen that time ad that this character is pretty suspicious. You know yep. that they've done their inspects and their fingerprints. So at that point, it's uh, it's pretty pretty good shot. Yep. Right, and it's especially good not to shoot someone at Windows on Library if you see a time ad because there's so many spots on Library there could have been another time ad, and you know that the spy is not going to be done yet. They're going to do one more thing. So you could very well be right that the time ad was caught, and then we're just waiting for one thing to confirm it. All right. Anyway, uh, that is um, right. Well, anyway, we're up, so plastics is up by one. Uh, has a chance to take uh, pull ahead here on his 
least uh, successful maps, which would which would be uh, pretty good to see. We'll find out if we can do that in three, two, one, playing it. And this is a, an interesting spy choice here, uh, pearls. I don't know many people who actually uh, see pearls or, or orange dress on a, a big map like Modern or Library and go, that can't be the spy, they're the slowest. Um, but it does kind of make us slightly less obvious because we're uh, we're so slow. We're, we're always seen moving. Um, and uh, I, I think potentially the sniper might feel a little bit good about the fact that you're not getting much done as, as these characters. The advantage to Pearls and Safari is going to be bug opportunities. Now, bug opportunities are going to be kind of plentiful on library regardless. But if we are if we are walking and Ambassador follows us, we have Wheels who's slightly faster than us. And so we might be able to do a walking bug. Now, on library, it's a bit hard. It's not like Gallery is really the best map for that. Um, so I'm not sure if that was our intent. Oh, and we, we it looks like we get caught for the time ad, or at least we are one of the top suspects for it. Wow, that's, uh, that's a rough start for, uh, for Plastics here. Time ad pretty much puts us back to the start of the game as well. So we're starting the game off with a, a big fat highlight. And you can see from Turnip Boy's laser movement, this is him guarding the microfilm animation very closely, wanting to find Plastics, triggering that uh, transfer so we can shoot him right here and right now. Plastics is holding this book. I think we've hit the maximum amount of read animations. So we do put it back. And now for Plastics, it's all about how do I get out of this dire situation I found myself in. And yeah, he's uh, the, the sniper, I believe, is incredibly suspicious of Plastics because the sniper's doing that one, this one thing that I kind of love that players do. I don't know if they do it intentionally, but as they move the laser from left to right, they dip around the spy where they actually go under the feet just to make it look like they're intentionally avoiding them when actually it's more suspicious or it, it shows more intent than it would be if you just had the laser pass over. But uh, it's just like a, it's just like an intuitive thing that snipers do, and when I see that, if I'm able to actually notice that as spy, I immediately think I'm screwed. <laughs> okay, here we go. Stepping into statues, we've got our flirt up to sixty-eight percent. Now, if Turnip Boy is is sitting at about ninety percent confirmation that Pearls is the spy, then uh, a middle statue triple inspect could be enough to to shoot at this point. Plastics gets his three inspects. Does look like we're not going, not going to swap just yet. A little bit early uh, on the map, and it does reduce the targets down to just about two. Now we still have to find some mission progress, and it's still not looking great. Yeah, we are keeping with white dress in the peripheral of our vision so much. Now, the library is a little bit odd to cast sometimes because you actually see different amounts depending on what your monitor is. So I can't tell exactly if the if the spy is always on screen, but let's say that um, uh, Turnip Boy has a relatively similar sized monitor to me. He is keeping white on the edge of his screen almost the entire time, <laughs> and that that. Green on time ad. Yeah. Yeah. As, as soon as uh, as soon as the sniper see a uh, spy see it's nice. Yeah. Sees that the uh, the time ad has slowed down. It's uh it's about time to take that shot. Yeah, I, yep. I think that that was uh, just a an early an early catch, and yeah, then... uh, yeah, that was just unfortunate. Yeah, and also, but to note, um, we really didn't have much done the spy, so it's it's possible that Plastics knew how suspicious they were, but um, they weren't getting stuff done. And unfortunately, as we mentioned at the beginning, starting as pearls, you kind of need a time ad on library unless you are doing some sort of insane rush, right? And so we're we're doing kind of the right thing. We recognize that it's going to be difficult. We do an early time ad, so bef way before we know we're going to need it, but we could assume we need it based on the fact that we're pretty slow character. We're doing a lot of transit time, but we get caught immediately for it. Yeah. All right. Anyway, I mean, Plastic's doing pretty well to uh, keep pace with Turnip Boy. So uh, still, anything can happen in the set. Uh, as Rocker, as uh, Turnip Boy steps in as. Uh, spy for as rocker that should uh we'll see if uh Trinip boy can uh pull ahead once again here in three two one playing it and uh some people pick cast some people don't some people pick spy some people don't um can't remember turnip boy's uh, philosophy on this i did have a chat to him after my match uh in regular season but rocker is his most picked spy character by 
a decent amount of percent and on library it's uh it's really good due to the fact that you 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 kind of blend in surprisingly uh <laughs> despite your bright yellow outfit it seems a little bit ambiguous of a character but also it's one of the best microfilm animations when it comes to uh, that action test so if Chenna Boy wants to uh, to transfer the the microfilm, then he has a great character for it. Yeah, actually, I, I I shouldn't say this, but I will. I actually completely agree. I love Rocker as my picks. I'm I I know that I whenever I'm trying to figure out who to pick and I can't oh, no. decide on someone. Oh, we, oh, interesting. Okay, so um, okay, we see we get the fingerprint. Uh, the return was a bit awkward. Yep, and we're marked very suspicious. awkward. Okay. Plastics is not over it. I think br briefcase animation uh, etiquette is actually something Plastics is really good at. Uh, and so you don't want to be making mistakes like that. Well, oh, we do get the bug, though. I actually didn't think that was going to connect because Teal makes up her mind at the last second to go in a different direction. But actually, that was that might have been the the bug we could get off with a highlight in that scenario because at, if um if the ambassador had walked all the way through our arm was going to be more visible than it already was uh, then again um it, plastics could have seen it and is just holding their shot because they know they can't be done yet um again we're also seeing where plastics might just be barely keeping turnip boy on their screen they're also not looking at the statues over to the right there we go um so i was thinking we're really suspicious if we're if we're giving up territory yeah, no, but constantly keeping plastics in view here. Uh, Tony Boy is uh, not really getting escape from this. And I do think that there is 100% possibility that bug could be caught just due to the way the sniper cam works. Sat, uh, <laughs> sat on Rocker for, for so long afterwards. It's, it's kind of like you're, you're internalizing. Do I shoot now or do I wait? Um, plastics is going to wait. We do step to side statues here. Pick up uh, our first inspects as well as... Uh, Potentially a swap. We'll have to see. Uh, you can see that Plastics is tilting his laser to, to watch for the swap here. And so if Turnip Boy is, is keeping track of the laser movement, then he has to know he's possibly top suspect. Yeah, no, because like uh, it's been like a good like 15, 20 seconds since we've looked at the right side of the statues. We've just now seen it. We've If there are... If uh, if something had happened over there, it would have been absolutely devastating for Plastics. But Plastics is, I think, correctly tunneling on Turnip Boy at this point. Now, there's two um, book fingerprints that are open right, or about to be open, assuming that Ambassador puts it back in yellow. And that, oh, okay, so that one's not open yet, but we do do have a fingerprint opportunity at blue. Oh, Ooh, triggered safety's off, yeah. All right. Green time ad caught and uh, fairly quick talk in that conversation there, so... Plastics essentially doing the uh, the same treatment of, of the previous game yep. allows Turner Boy to uh, to move around a little bit before being shot. Yep. All right, and yeah, now look at that that briefcase return again. Uh, in my estimation, uh, most AI would have given up and not attempted to return yep. with the ambassador in that position. It was just it was pretty much if her back is up against the wall, um, don't just give up. Just you know, put it that, down that wherever spot you is are. Tricky. Yeah. If the ambassador is just slightly more to the right, then AI will return it because there is a, yeah. a tiny bit of area behind the back that AIs can return to. Um, but that was not it in that scenario. And so, yeah, turn it boy 100% should have just put it down. Yep. The rule of thumb, at least the one that I use, I don't know how exactly accurate it is, is if Toby wouldn't offer you a drink there, you can't return there. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, Sometimes true. I mean, for, I mean I mean, maybe this is too like saying too much, but I mean, most of the time, if the ambassador is moving, and I have an opportunity to just put the briefcase down and not do a return. Generally, that's what I will do, just because it's just less time with me holding the briefcase, less time for mm -hmm. the sniper to notice that I had even picked up a briefcase. The other thing is, is that when you see the ambassador in tight areas like that, you can see the um, the personal space meter start ticking down. And so even if you are incorrect on your idea that yeah. the AI would return, the ambassador is going to be gone by the time you put the briefcase yeah. down or by the time another AI picks it up. So you're not going to get that AI confirmation, to give that AI confirmation to the sniper because uh, by the time the next AI picks it up, the uh, ambassador has moved. I, I have mind blown by uh, Rocker having a phone. I believe uh, 
Yep, it, it, they uh, has an iPhone, I believe. Um, yep. Um, um, Boots has the uh, same phone. And also, <laughs> it's one of the longest time ad animations. It takes yep. about five seconds in total. Yeah, and I think there was a bug for a while with I think it was Rocker where the phone it was upside. It was upside down, right? Well, it was upside down, but also wasn't it outside of her body for a while so that when uh, she would bug, a cell phone would fly around. For yeah, a second? Oh that my God. possibly happened. Yeah, I believe so. I'm, I do. I mean, I remember it being upside down for sure. That was it. Yeah, there was something where it's like Rocker's phone was like because it's actually it actually literally is hidden. All of their phones and stuff. If they're yeah. uh, if they're if they take an item out, it's literally hidden in their model. During yeah, the I've game. actually yeah. I mean, I've looked in a lot of the models and they, they, they yeah, like like the like uh, Taft's watch is like Taft's is in is it generals is in his head somewhere, right? Well, no, it's on his that? well. Well, the the texture is on his, his hat. hat. Yeah. It's under his hat. <laughs> yeah. Strange. Yeah. You know, details. But yeah. anyway, uh. Here we go. We'll move on to actual uh, spy party play. We'll see if Plastics can actually take a lead here. Uh, this has been a lot of a lot of back and forth with these two players. I think we were expecting uh, Turner Boy to kind of smash on this map, but uh, hasn't been happening yet. So Turner Boy is actually uh, sniping for just a uh, tie on library. See if you can do it here in three, two, one, playing it. His 100% sniper win rate says that he can, but uh, like you mentioned, Plastics has survived Turnip's spy. Turnip Boy actually having one of the best spies in the entirety of the Challenger division, um, very marginally the, the best in the regular season. So it's, uh, it's, it's the place to be if you're Plastics. If, if um, uh, Plastics was tracking or trying to track, sorry, if Turnip Boy was trying to track seduction, there were so many people joined in pads at useless spots like um like windows and uh, uh statue pads stuff like that there was a really interesting opportunity to try to pair people Ooh. it would have all been wrong but it was just interesting oh oh i love this plastic screens purloins takes a drink immediately after everything's off sniper camera and now he's seen taking a drink and the guest list hasn't been taken yet will we get a reject oh we do it's perfect seek rejects and now it's going to be offered to another ai who's going to reject as well this is a long chain and Plastics has a drink. This is the best chance to find a low light. Yes, there's there's such a trade off with this where um, so the downside of, of getting the so you have to you, Toby has to not give a drink to somebody else because you can't request enough. You can't you can't get it back to you usually in time to be able to request. Oh, he gets it. Low light, right? It, Lovely. All right, that's that's pretty heads up. You're right. This that's was that. a great play. At this point. Plastics is going to go fairly invisible because this low light, when it comes for Purloin, is going to be a relatively hard one in most snipers' eyes, especially Turnip Boys. And so if Plastics can now just play this game out fairly um, well, then uh, then he should have the spy win. The, the thing that's going to burn us is if we believe that highlight is a low light, but after you've made that play to deliberately fish for a low light, I think you have to assume you got the low light. I would hope so, and you're right that that is the that is the that's the way we lose at this point because this low light on us is pretty hard. Like this is a pretty confident low light, so um, uh, this would be pretty hard to shake at this point unless we do something like like a microfilm animation is one of the few things you could do, or if they see the swap animation. There's not there's not too many things to bring us back at this point, um, except the biggest liability is probably just finishing, as you said. Right now, it seems we're just going for the timer flirt, which is not the worst idea considering that we have pearls and she's going to be moving in transit a lot. Although, actually, no. Now we give up on that. We had, yeah, no, we had I, spent like a good 20 seconds there ooh, already. I really dislike um, the fact that we did spend so long, uh, about half the flirt time, but I also really dislike that we're going to side statues here. Plastics is playing this too safe, in my opinion. You've fished for the low light. You've got the low light, but we are going to swap this statue. This is a good start. Green swap. We'll have to find out if a low light or a highlight picks it up. And if Turnip Boy spots it, we're looking for the flirt, but it was too long waiting. And it's going to be Pearls moving. In conversation with the double agent, though, oh, it is a low light picking it up. This may be rough for Plastics, because this could be one oh, of the only ways leaves. that you get back into it. Double agent leaves as well. It's starting to unravel, potentially. Turnip Boy, he has highlights. He hasn't seen the swaps uh, come through just yet. Still looking towards these highlights, especially at Book. And oh, actually, this is a really nice position in conversation with Plastics. Almost just blocks the statue from Turnip Boy's view. 
Pearl's helping out a massive amount. Three missions done. 30 seconds left. We need to find one more inspect. We need to find a bug. Oh, we go for the bug, but it doesn't connect. Sniper laser on top of us, but I'm not sure that it was seen. That's terrible. 19 seconds left. Rough time. We can't go to the statue. We'll lose if we go to the statue. We'll time out. It's Surely. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you're, you're completely... Oh, wait, fingerprint, but we don't have the other one. We... No. Uh, I think this is... This is... I think we lose, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, such, oh, a, that's such a shame. That's sad. That is one of the sad ways that we could lose that game is a why timeout. You, why you do you do this to us, Plast? I mean... Uh, that, I, I, I have to assume that we felt the highlight was too strong. Yeah. I think you're right that we must have felt like we were highlit by going to side statues. Otherwise, we would have just gone straight to yeah. middle statues. Oh, he thought he had the bug. No, that's even worse. That's even more heartbreaking. You, you oh, walk past the amber. You start it just a second too late. think you have the bug. Right. It doesn't connect. And you go to the statue with full confidence that this is a, a, a GG at the end of the day. Right. That's, uh, that's, that's horrible. Like, uh, and so at least it wasn't um, yeah, a like decision a making thing because it was, it was a it was a losing decision to go to that statue at that point yeah i don't and, know why you wouldn't it just... makes sense now but well he thought he had the bug yeah and so but i mean there's a statue right here he could, sense. you know it's like a statue right next to him could... no, you can't bug and get the statue at the same time i mean you can if you have a low light if you stop if you stop yeah I, I guess that's true if you stop or bounce then you can but it's uh it's one of those things that you don't know you have a low light you should know that you have a low light but you don't um and so, yeah, there's there's plenty of reasons that you don't make that t decision, but that would have been GG if yep. the uh, the bug did connect. Now, the interesting thing is also that Turnip Boy held their shot. We had seen Purloin and Swap off, assuming that mm. Turnip Boy noticed. But this no shot. contact. Yeah, that, exactly. I was gonna say the contact leaving um, was really maybe the biggest moment of this game, besides the low light and the uh, the play to get the low light. Because by not showing contact, snipers are really reluctant to shoot. But I think that if 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 there had been a contact that had gone off, uh, it would be really hard to have three missions showing essentially for the sniper yeah. and for them not to shoot somebody. Yeah, but anyway, I mean, really here, Turnip Boy kind of just got sort of got a bit lucky here with this win. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, I agree. It could have easily have gone the other way. So I mean, Turnip Boy, I'm sure after this match felt pretty good for getting the win, but then he's like, oh. And I love it. The low light the spy here. And I'm not. I'm. I'm going to throw it the other way, Cleto. It's whenever I low light the spy and then win as sniper, I, I get that shock factor of like, well, crap, that could have gone wrong. But I genuinely believe that the spy gets tilted more because they feel they could have won. Yeah, yeah, and... I, I would agree. Like if you're a spy, and you're like, oh, I was low lit. Oh. Yeah, and, yep. and that could just be the 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 moment in your mental mental game where that that breaks you. All right, and that's that is unfortunate, and uh, we are still tied. So I mean, at the very least, uh, uh, Plastics did very well tying on what what was uh, seemed to be his weakest map. So, uh, yep, that's that's something something you can uh, take away from from that. And anyway, we'll see if uh, either of them can actually pull ahead here. Three, two, one, playing it. High rise, any three or five, the soft tail variant being picked up here with contact inspects to do some bug and the mission set up for Turnip Boy. And I think that Plastics has picked this up due to the fact that when it comes to his success rate as a sniper, it's one in uh, three and four uh, is, is a correct shot or a correct uh, sniper play. Turnip Boy is uh, one in three. And, and so. You know, going from uh, from a, a bad map for uh, for plastics on library. Well, this is Turnip Boy's bad map. It, it's high rise. Um, we'll have to see if uh, Turnip Boy can weather that though. Yeah, there's not an infinite amount of time on this map, so it's three missions, so it's not too bad. But the because there's such a low amount of guests, you can't really be as active as you might want to be to get those three missions done. It's a really fascinating map. Um, there's no um, so the fact that we have transfer swap off means there's not a lot of reason for us to be looking at the right side of the map unless Ambassador yep. goes there. So we're going to be really focused in on these conversations. Yeah, and I actually played a game of competitive high rise uh, really early on in SEL where they even turned Inspect off and, and had Perloin on instead, meaning I had literally no incentive to, to watch the, the right-hand side of the map at all. Um, right. At least with Inspect turned on, you, you have to note when 
people do visit that far set of statues. And speaking of which, the Any ambassador just has, so there's a fingerprint available. A fake contact comes through. Potentially, Turnip Boy thinks that Kane here may be finished or getting close to and wants to try and throw plastics through the loop. Yeah, and, and for the people that haven't played High Rise 3 of 5 very much, um, this is one of the maps that you try to get someone else shot almost more often than you try to actually finish. And so we're, we, we're, there's the mission progress might be a little bit deceiving because we might not actually be going for completion of mission. We're going for just try to make sure there's enough people that are suspicious that somebody gets shot. Now that does rely on a little bit of AI luck. Um, and right now, are we picking up? Uh, uh, yeah, we're picking Both up these statues are fingerprinted. Both of them are. Interesting. Both of them are. So I wonder if Turner Boy goes statue to statue, picks up both inspects, both fingerprints, and then finishes on a second set of inspects at a different statue. Because it's kind of counterintuitive going statue to statue like this, especially when you know they're both inspected. Look at that. Straight for it. This is going to be seduce fingerprint and then look for the inspector at some uh, other statue. Yeah, and I, I, I don't even know if Plastics knows that there's two fingerprints over there because it's hard to see if Ambassador went to two different statues behind the screen. Um, so this is actually, we're in a pretty good position as Turnip Boy. We do have to make sure to visit. Um, we can just contact. We, it was a fake before. We don't even have to uh, to finish the inspects. Here it comes, green contact. And this should just be the mission win. I don't see Plastics finding the shot here. Three seconds left, two and that is Turnip Boy finding the spy win. Lovely stuff. Yeah, and you're right because like the, the, the funny thing about visiting, let's see, even if he had noticed the two statue visits, as long as we are not credited with fingerprint, we're really gonna think the spy, if that actually was the spy, is gonna visit statues once more, right? And so uh, the contact there was definitely. Yeah, the right I mean, it doesn't even look like either either of those statue visits were even acknowledged by uh, Plastics. He's spending a lot of time uh, centering in on. Uh, Papa Danger, it looks like. Yeah, heads yeah, up no, play I'm... from Turnip Boy to notice the two different inspects yeah. and get them both done and go be aggressive about them. Uh, it was a great decision. And like we noted earlier, Kletos, um, plastics won't highlight for um, just any old inspect. He tends yeah. to do it when inspect is completed more than anything. So, Makes sense. But I mean, it just um, didn't didn't even look like. Uh, sure. He had he had, he had looked he didn't over rotate, there. That's for sure. Yeah. Like I mean, you could see you could see uh, Rocker through the screen or boots through the screen, but uh... honestly, Turnip Boy probably could have gotten away with an any four or five. On yep. That game, maybe even maybe even a bug. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's that's really nice stuff. Two fingerprints in quick succession. The the finger pronto, as your cat coined, and uh, that puts Turnip Boy in the lead. Yeah, this is uh, might actually be the first time Turnip Boy has a lead. Or very least, uh, we'll see if uh, I mean not not neither of these players have uh, been up by more than one, so we'll see if uh, he can actually uh, pull ahead here. In three, two, one, playing it. Yeah, we did have uh, two spy victories on, on courtyard, so Turnip Boy did go up and serve, but uh, Plastics immediately knocked him back down. Here we go. Plastics is now spying to try and equalize this series a very hard position to be in and this is sometimes where spying first can be valuable if you do find that first spy win because you constantly put your opponent in the position where they have to spy to keep up and uh we should note there that um the fingerprint has been swapped out in, the the in this setup which is i would say the maybe possibly this the fingerprint's an interesting one to cut but i think purloin is the the next most popular one to include in the five yep. missions Plastics did go for a, a bit of a period where he put microfilm on on this map, um, and it had some sort of sort uh, of some form of success, but uh, has moved away from from his microfilming days at least. And clearly, this is a uh, Plastics believing that Turnip Boy's ability to track print is there, uh, but potentially his uh, ability to track a green purloin that bounces around not so much and just uh, to, to bring us back to it, Plastic's green testability is pretty strong. Yeah, and I love uh, microfilm on this map if it's part of an any 4 of 8, for example, but it's hard to justify including it over a bunch of other ones. It's, it's not so much that microfilm is impossible, it's just that the other ones are so possible. Swap 
being an outlier, perhaps. But the other ones are just so important to include that uh, a micro basically microfilm when you're only looking at a small set of missions like five Ooh. missions isn't hard to guard it's hard to guard if there's eight other ones sorry seven we might ones. die right here we've got the mission complete it's a very quick move oh we take the drink yep. to cancel our talk that's enough to uh to confirm in tenant boy's mind that this is us trying to flirt for free that's a nice little rush, a soft tail rush here on, on, on yeah. high rise. But you should probably like take your time a little bit with that flirt. Take your time, absolutely. Yeah, you if got you minute, minute in that and conversation. Half. Yeah. Even just leave, go to bookshelves, have a bit of a time, take a drink. You know, try and act a little bit more AI like because then the the sniper who knows that you are close to being completed with a contact and uh, triple inspect will then consider other other choices. And, and then with fingerprint turned off, even more so. There's less reasons for the sniper to not think that you are the spy. Yep. yep. I mean, but still, that was still a good shot from Turner Boy. Uh, mm -hmm. had... He was. He did not want to take that shot, but he had to. And yep. it was the correct yep. shot. Yep. yep. All right. And with that, Turner Boy is up uh, up two. So, uh, with, you know, so this this will be uh, Plastics needing to come back here. But, um, and this is Turner Boy's pick, so we'll see how that goes. Ooh, and we got uh, first sighting of Small Man as Spy. It's almost like something you have to you you have to spend. It's like a currency thing where it's like <laughs> yep. you get to you get to have one Small Man in a match, and uh -huh. then what do you do with it when you have it? <laughs> I think I got I think I got some extra currencies. Yeah, no, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't always pick them. Sometimes it was just random. I I I I'm curious. Well, I don't know what my spy my, my sniper win rate would have been like if I just instantly shot uh, smallman every time. It might not have been that much better than my actual sniper win rate. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> All right. Anyway, we'll see if uh, see how Turnip Boy does with uh, smallman here. If he takes full advantage of uh, sneakiness, and actually, I'm kind of I mean, kind of interestingly. Like one of Small Man's weaknesses is purloin because of the uh, the Toby duck, and so on a map where Toby's at the bar, that sort of goes away a little bit. That's true. So, and we'll see uh, see how that goes here in three, two, one, playing it. Yeah, I think uh, just to elaborate a little bit more, Small Man, very strong character. Modern, not the map for him. In my opinion, it's just too open. You can see small men in almost every scenario other than uh, one conversation, in my opinion, which is the one that Tenet Boy is standing there. Uh, and so I don't think the uh, the benefits of small men really feed into modern, especially considering he actually has a really slow walking animation in moderns, one of the largest maps to, for ground to cover between mission points. That's true. I mean, there could be a Yomi thing in there where it's also one of the maps because you can see them, you're not nervous about them. So they can still do things like um, like if if Ambassador settles into a conversation where they're not being crowded out, but they are in a conversation, you might be able to get one of those free bugs. But I think that um, in the in the match we cast last week, uh, I can't remember who it was, but they bugged with small men. Um, or actually, no, actually, I'm out of the, 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 the Diamond Finals. I think I think Bacon might have been Smallman or something like that, where they, uh, where Smallman was Kaylee on through. veranda. Yes, yep. uh, and they bugged through, um, bugged through Ambassador, and it showed because the thing is, his bug animation actually Ooh. isn't that great. We're returning the book, blue book, to green bookshelf, and this is the one time where Smallman is valuable because that conversation will block him uh, when the the sniper adopts this very standard position of the laser. So far, not seen at that green bookshelf. We do get a glimpse of him walking away, but we're zooming in to mark books, which uh, indicates to me that potentially this has gone unseen from plastics. And now, turn it, boy. Mission completion, stepping back for flirt, hits the white test. We've got time on our hands to plot out the rest of our game. I feel like to balance out small men, every time small men completes a mission, he should grin a little bit, and then I should be able <laughs> to shoot him during that. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Uh, I always feel like I always feel like when I see turn up whenever I see Smallman walking away from a mission site, I just imagine a grin on their face, and I really want to shoot. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I feel that. I feel that deep in my soul, Slappy. We uh, we go to the the bar. We're gonna pick up our delegate here. 
now going to look to uh, to flirt from the other side of the conversation. But unfortunately, General does sunshine us. He uh, going to pick up the briefcase as well. Which, uh, it's pretty sad times. Means that we're not going to get to visit him for a little bit here. We still have that delegate in hand. We got the drink. We're going to send a uh, low light in rocker and to, uh, to pick up the pearl and we're going to contact really just chaining these together. Yes, and so also now we're in the position where lowlights are picking up the purloin, so we're probably not going to be guarding it that much. This is actually a pretty strong play by Turnip Boy. So there's 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 a mixture of things that happens when you um, when you banana bread when you send someone over. Is one you are confirming that whoever picks it up is going to not be the spy, but also it's not going to be something that they're going to be paying as much attention to because it's a low light. Turnip Boy now getting his first set of inspects. We've got 43 seconds on the clock. We need to flirt with General, but he's on the move again. Oh, that's uh, rough. And that's the, the slow movement speed from uh, Small Man coming back to bite us. Time ad comes through. Green test just before the beeping starts. Yeah. We'll have to see if Plastics is able to catch it now that the beeping is going. We now know that Time ad has 100% happened. Flirting with the seduction target from the other side of the conversation, purely hidden. At the back of it here and we can possibly even get towards the statue and uh find the inspect without being seen oh wow low light the only one that was done before the contact came through in rocker picks I mean, up the i believe statue. rocker was the one that picked up the uh, pro line, yes right? correct yes yeah she was yeah but all right a... well you know i mean yeah i guess it's just you know a lot going on I wonder but what you this know. is for i mean the red I mean, she was at the bar while the BB was going. No, no, on, no, so. the the low light is what I'm specifically. Oh, the initial low light because, on yeah. Rocker. Because the the initial low light comes really early, around the thirty, uh, the the fifty second mark into the game. We path into conversation, and then a little bit later on, I think we get low lit. Now there is a SDA walking on the outside of the the room, and then the arrow kind of goes over us as the low light comes through. I don't know if it's an accidental one or if it was a very purposeful low light, but she definitely had progress. She, she went to statues, she took the guest list, she was getting her last inspect. The only thing she didn't have, and unfortunately because we low lit her early, was the contact, and she was a 100% low light from the contact as yep. well. Yeah, unfortunate. Yeah. You know, I mean, it is often a fair... Low light, dis oh, okay. Yep. So, uh, this, is, uh, this is where... For early statues? Uh, oh, time ad, time ad. She yeah. was at Windows after the time ad. Uh, yeah, so essentially, um, Plastics has, has confirmed in, in chat that he was doing a bit of uh, opponent research lowlights, uh, lowlighting for early statue visits, okay. something that Turnip Boy must have not been doing. Right. Uh, well, I mean, it was a good, it was a good, definitely a good low light. Unfortunately, did yeah. not, uh, was not confident enough in, in that bit of behavioralism, I guess. Yeah, I, I've been there as well. When you're Pressure's starting to mount against you, and you, yeah. you're starting to to do those opponent behavioral lowlights. Sometimes they they come back to bite you. Yeah, and just you know, I mean, and and in all fairness, you know, ignoring the fact that uh, Rocker could not have uh, contacted, um, you know, very standard move. I've certainly done a lot. Is just in the last minute or so, uh, if I I'm, if I think I need to shoot somebody, you know, person holding a statue is often uh, best choice. Well, yeah, I a mean, person who's holding a statue did the guest list and has two sets of inspects. So yep. it's, and the, the was at the windows yeah. during the time ad. Yep. The time was, ad, exactly. Tex, yeah. Tex, Smallman, and Rocker were the three people at windows beforehand. Yep. And because of the conspicuous nature of a green time ad right in the 30-second mark. Um, now, the thing, though, is uh, it it's a bit early for a shot if they just added time. Like, they probably wouldn't need to add time if all they needed to do was inspect. Yeah, um, I don't know. That's, that's that that, only, that shot timing is fine. Back. Like, if you consider Turnip Boy, he could have gone to the back of conversation, flirted immediately into the set of statues, yeah. and finished. Like the, he could have finished. Is is yeah, uh, I would agree. Is, is all I'm saying. I, I yeah, don't, it would have been like another. Yeah, I, I have a feeling that had had that shot not come off, Turnip Boy would have probably just gone to one of those two statues and picked it up. Sure. Finish yep. within you know five seconds. All right. Anyway, uh, so with that, Turnip Boy is uh, uh, extended his lead. Uh, it's gonna uh, Plastics is gonna need to pretty much 
sweep most of the rest of these games to uh, to win. We'll yeah, see difficult, you... difficult task. Yeah, yeah. But uh, hey, I've, I mean, we've seen some pretty massive comebacks here, so it's certainly not impossible. And we'll see if he can do it as as the person he had just shot. Three, two, one, playing it. Yeah, Rocker has played a big role in this match, actually. It's funny, I guess we had mentioned her earlier, but she's been shot, yep. she's been spy, she is, I think, even been an ambassador once. Yep, no, she she is both of these guys, one of the, the highest spy uh, choices. We do go for a time ad right at the edge of the map really early. We'll have to see if uh, Turnip Boy can spot this, and if he does, then there's quite a few early statue goers that could get knocked down to low lights, which help us out as well. Ooh, yeah. Classic's trying to flirt here. That's uh, not quite the distance you need. Yeah, and That's I'm not sure through. that we want to be at Windows again. We would have been a pretty distant flirt, and let's it, because of the nature of green time ads, catching, sometimes you catch that late, and then you look for the people that are at Windows still, which is a mistake from the sniper, but uh, they could have you could have mistakenly framed yourself for a time ad um, accidentally, but it doesn't look like anything comes of it for now. I love the progress that Plastics is picking up here. Fingerprint and, of course, the Delegate option. We didn't quite get that flirt due to us not quite um, getting the, the distance correct at the, the, the window pad, but it's uh, still fine. We're going to pick up a, a green test here for 44%, which puts us in a, a decent position to find the, the three flirt at different areas. And when you want to talk about spy win rates, this is the map that, surprisingly, Plastics has a really high one on. It's his third best map for spying with a 62.5% win rate. Something that shows that he, he really understands that the pacing required for modern and uh, the missions required to get under the nose of the sniper. Yeah, and um, it's it's good to see because we're sometimes people only feel like they get forced into adding time on modern if, they, um, if they're a slow character, which we're not. But again, like it's still a big map for whatever characters around. So I'm glad to see the early time ad and the fact that we're still making decent mission progress. And honestly, we're still kind of a ways out. Even with the time ad, even with the decent mission progress, we still have two and a half minutes to finish up two missions and then do two additional missions. Yeah, no, it's it's not a bad position to be in. And considering contacts usually a staple on this map, you have to expect that that's going to come through at some point, which really means what's our final mission going to be. Inspect's going to come through going to start up a uh, fourth mission for ourselves here. The Purloin went to Kane, by the way, and I believe only now is it being noticed. Turnip Boy kind of moves his laser around to the left side and sees that Toby is without guest list. I we'll have to see if any low lights do come through for this, because if it is only just now that we're noticing that the guest list is there, not there, then that means that any information we try to gather potentially could be incorrect. It's been a bit of a bummer for Fingerprint this game. I've just been, like, watching the Ambassador. Ambassador keeps bailing on Fingerprint opportunities. Ambassador goes to bar, doesn't take a drink, goes to Statue earlier, but gets forced out because they had a drink and they sipped and General was in their space and they got bumped out. So it hasn't... The Ambassador's been moving around so much, but hasn't left as many Fingerprints as they normally would. And that's been a bit of a bummer because we want to pick up that last Fingerprint. The briefcase is down, and Irish will leave this conversation in just a second, so there is the opportunity to get a fingerprint from that. However, we're going to prioritize the statue instead, which means uh, an AI almost certainly will take this briefcase away from us, and we can see Cowboy doing that on the side as well. A swap comes through, another green test for Plastics, really abusing his ability to hit those action tests. Now we have three missions completed, and all we need to do is seduce and fingerprint to find the mission win. Yeah, this is, I'm, unfortunately, this is a really conspicuous um, callover to, to green swap. Now we'll see if the boy is looking at Ooh. it. Uh, interesting. So we, we, try to, we try to cover it up, which is not a bad decision if we don't look at the statue and we don't. Uh, I, I like this play then. Um, this is, this has to be a spy win. Plastics is going to opt for the seduce. Deek moves away. We have to remember there's a fingerprint on green bookshelf. We have so many ways to finish this game. 30 seconds left. Plastics, how it does he opt in to finish it? Seek, in that conversation with the double, uh, suspected double agent, seems like the flirt from across the conversation will be the choice. 20 seconds left to go. All we have to do is hit that right click, and we've got it. But oh no, Seek God. leaves! 
Disaster starting to form. To Plastics has to move. chase the window pad to try and find the float coming through. It's going to be too far. We have to stop it. It might be too far. No, Let's it's too far. Oh, wow. That's way too no, far. No, no it's too no. far again. Oh, my Zero. God. Oh my no. Oh. This is twice in this series that Plastics has thrown away spy games that were 100% wins. And yeah. it has to be heartbreak at this point. Yeah, he must just not have known about the fingerprint at the at the bookshelf because well, I mean, at this you know. point, we are tunneled on yeah. seduction, right? We are, we are so tunneled. And so the thing is, um, uh, so in the last few seconds of the game, the first time that plastic stopped at the um, at the window, they needed to add time. They didn't have time to flirt, even if they were in range. There's the timer that it takes. It's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think. You I mean, the only way there would have been to stop early and time add. Yes, exactly, I mean, which is unfortunate because yeah. it's going to be overtime if it's a green, and it's going to be a white time ad, it's a white yeah. time ad, right? And I would say that going when when I uh, went into this uh, last conversation with Seek, I think it would have been uh, smart to just insta-talk. Since, uh, you it would have, have been the worst idea. Yeah, I mean, that's a, I mean especially a conversation. a conversation with, yeah, there's only two people in the, other people in the conversation. Uh, insta-talking is a thing that AI could yep. very well do in that situation i mean just to recap after that game that puts turnip boy up to eight i believe yeah. plastics on four and if plastics had won the the library spy game and this spy game this is not a, a an eight four this is a six six yeah oh it's it's rough to to watch these these spy games fall apart for plastics and this time you know even if we had just hit that long flirt uh, from the window yeah. pad at the beginning of yeah, the game, the early we, one, yeah. we, Even, yeah. we demonstrated that we didn't quite have the the distances at window pads down. Yeah, that could well, have been the yeah. game one as well. It's 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 just ah, oh, yeah, it's really unfortunate. Yeah, it's funny is that's, that's, you know. Boy actually wasn't did not seem like they were confident at the end of the game. There's even there's a screen shake around ten seconds left or so. Um, where it seemed like they, it, maybe this was just readjusting their mouth. Sometimes we interpret screen shakes too much. <laughs> but um, but there was a screen shake at the end of the game, and there was a lot of highlights on the map. So I don't think Turnip Boy was comfortable at all in that end game. And so it was it was a wonderful spy game up until that last part. I loved the decision to banana bread um, to cover yeah. the swap, because the, the Turnip Boy had no idea that the swap had gone yeah. off. And probably by the time they had seen it, they knew that it had been someone out there, and they just had a sea of highlights staring back yeah. at them, but they didn't know which one it was. Yeah. I'm actually surprised a shot didn't come off. We, we have a swap and we have a purloin. That might be what the screen shake is about because he knows that someone's about to mission complete. Unfortunately, though, Plastics isn't able to find it. Now we sit match point in favor of Turner Point, 8-4. Yeah. to four. For Plastics to win this series, he has to win every game from this point onwards to force the tiebreaker scenario. Well, this is Plastics map, so we'll see if that... Uh... That uh, comes in to help him at all here. I mean, and he is sniping first, so that's you know, that's at least so that's something. That'll that'll hopefully give him some confidence if, if he manages to get this shot. We'll see how it goes in three, two, one, playing it. You say it's Plastic's map. Well, yeah, it is his map choice here, but this is Turnip Boy's home ground. Pub has been his map choice of the season. Thirty-six games total played this season in SEL 4. Turnip Boy knows this map inside and out, and that's really tough times for Plastics, knowing that Turnip Boy has a pretty good handle of this map. Yeah, and it's also one that's it's a little bit hard to run in either direction, to either sweep as uh, to sweep for either player. You know, it's possible. It's not the swingiest of maps. Um, and I don't know, like in this position, I'm not sure if Plastics is going to be overly hesitant. We, we tend to say that when players get stressed as Sniper, they go yep. to extremes, right? They're either way too hesitant or way too itch, uh, uh, itchy trigger finger. And I'm curious to see that that comes through right now. It looks like we're not we're not freaking out too much. So, but still, that might not be enough. I'm still just kind of reeling at that game for them. Like, I would, like, during this game, if I was Plastics, I would still be thinking about the last game. I couldn't help it. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh... In fact, at this point, you, you have to be so confident in your, your sniper play that you can bounce back from a heartbreak, two heartbreaks of spy games in the series. And if you're you know, adding up the score, you, you know that this series could be tied up going into pub. And, and like Plastic says in the, the chat, he knew that this was 
the home map of Turnip Boy. And so instead of playing Courtyard Chicken, they were essentially playing Pub Chicken. However, at this point, Plastix <laughs> lost both. Either way, 81% comes through on the flirt. We've got a minute and 48 seconds. Turnip Boy will go to the bar to pick up a drink here and the delegate option as well. Double agent on the move. Uh, seduction target as well in orange dress on the move. Going to have to try and find our flirt, find our contact, find the, uh, the purloin, and then we need our fourth mission on pub, which sometimes not easy to get. Yeah. I'm, I'm still just kind of still thinking about the previous game, although we do pick up a fingerprint, which is good. Um, uh, which is when we sometimes we talk about our spy play, you have to manage your and good luck. Red. You also have to manage your bad luck. And so that was a thing where we got slightly unlucky with the seduction target leaving, but we didn't manage it really. We didn't plan for contingencies as well as we should have. But regardless, that was last game, and we delegate over to Alice, who I don't know if they'll be in time. There's a lot of people in line in front of them. Yeah, no, very close. This will come down to the last couple of seconds on this timer. Turnip Boy looking to try and finish this. He has a fingerprint as well from earlier, so could go for it. There it is. The expired does come through. 42 seconds on the clock. We need to find a fingerprint. We need to find a flirt, and then potentially we have to go to statues for the soft tail finish. Turnip Boy, to pick up the briefcase, going to fingerprint it as well. That's our second mission completion. 30 seconds left, and it's getting close now. Orange dress by herself in a conversation means she's going to be on the move with 23 seconds. And oh no, the mental fortitude has been broken. The shot's going to come through and it's the wrong one onto Red Dress. Turnip Boy is our first challenger finalist in this single elimination tournament. I wonder what, uh, what was, uh, I mean, obviously the ins inspect for the uh, Red Dress shot. I'm just wondering what else uh, would have happened to trigger that. I mean, you know, contact, clearly. Yeah, alone in a conversation with the suspected double agent. Well, no, actually, no, she was in transit during the during the contact. Whoops. Um, I, I, uh. I think this was just, we were thinking about the last game. I mean, and I don't Yeah, don't yeah, you might be, you might be right, just, uh, just a little tilt. Just yeah. not, not focusing as well as uh, maybe you should have in that final game. But, I mean, either way, it was gonna, it would have been rough trying to win the next uh next four games yeah yeah no um uh just taking taking a shot at that point i mean i probably wouldn't have been that much different she did kind of path me uh, ambassador a couple yeah. times if you if you've missed the low light and then you see her go past ambassador immediately leave the conversation and go to statue then you've got your four missions in your head and you can shoot for it yeah, and as noted in chat, this match was closer than the score indicates. This actually yep. easily could have gone both ways, and it, this game probably wouldn't. This particular pub game would have been vastly different if um, I think if uh, we had gotten this, uh, the spy win before. But um, uh, we we don't we don't say the tilt is real because it's not real. It's a it's a thing. It certainly is. But that tenant boy does progress to the finals of this. Challenger single limb tournament narrowly missing out as third seed overall in a promotion opportunity, uh, finishing behind Pox and myself in the Challenger League. But now he's in a position where he can fight for that promotion. If he wins the finals, then he gets it. If he takes second place, then he gets to fight for it regardless against Mr. Rogers. And our next matchup will decide who he plays. And, and uh, honestly, it was great. It was see the thing is that bothers me, or sorry, not bothers me, but it's a little bit sad. Is it's not that we didn't see good play from both sides. It's we saw excellent play from both sides. And so while I would have, it would have been stressful for both players to go into a long, close match, possibly even a tiebreaker. Um, uh, I expect to see a lot more from um, from Plastics in the future. I think that yep. well, there was a lot of great, also especially the sniper play. Like we're talking about the spy play where there's a lot of close calls, but his sniper play was on point as well. Yeah, just you know, just gotta just I guess he knows now. Get a little bit closer to the uh, seduction target at Windows. This is uh, the biggest best lesson to have taken from there. And anyway, uh, we got the next match uh, set up here. Pretty much. Let's. He stands up. There we go. All right. I'm going to that stuff going here. So uh, introducing these two players, Shep versus...